and I we can hear y'all. I can hear y'all, which is fabulous. Excellent. Hi, guys. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I just want to do a quick intro to, to today's Hangout and give you guys all a little bit of news. My name is Rich Harrington, and along with Melissa New, we are the publishers of Photofocus.com. We've got a great Hangout today. We've got two special guests, Gerard Murphy, uh, Gerard Murphy from Mosaic, and Lisa Snyder is here, and she is a top Photoshop expert. She, in fact, writes uh, a great book on Photoshop that many of you may have on your bookshelf. Now, I'm going to get out of the way here really quick, but I just want to make sure you guys know about Photofocus every day we publish multiple stories about photography. So we have two to three stories every day, sometimes more. Today was actually four. And there's tutorials, there's news, there's inspiration. We have a regular podcast that comes out three times a month. And we are now up to three regular Google Hangouts. So next week, we have a business Hangout all about the business side of photography. And that's going to be with Skip Cohen from Skip Cohen University and special guest Tamara Lackey. And then the week after that, we're launching our Triple Exposure Hangout, which is all about panoramic HDR and time-lapse photography. We'll alternate in each Hangout different topics. And the first guests for that are going to be Ron Pepper over at HDR Soft and Keith Kishka with Photo Trekker, who's a great time-lapse expert as well. So uh, with that in mind, I want to hand things off to Levi and Rob, who are the hosts for the show, and let them bring you up to speed on today's Hangout. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate it very much. Let's see. So, Rob, what are we up to today? Uh, today um, is, is inspired by questions I get often about how uh, the workflow between Lightroom and Photoshop works, where there are sometimes there are wrinkles to work out, some confusion, and there's quite a few different ways to uh, make that workflow. So I thought we'd kind of try and go through as many as we can and try and work through some of the uh, potential problems that uh, people come up against and hopefully help people avoid them. Excellent. And Rob is the uh, is, covers the Lightroom help desk for Kelby One. Is that right, Rob? That is correct, yeah. And so he is well acquainted with people's problems. I, I hear a lot of problems, yeah. <laughs> it's good. I learn a lot. I learn a lot from people, and I my hope is to... Uh, Pass, pass that on, pay it forward with everybody else uh, that comes to the help desk. So it's good. Excellent. Well, thanks. And Rob, will you introduce Lisa for us? Lisa, I love Lisa. You heard it right. If you if you have problems, go to Rob. <laughs> uh, Lisa and I go way back, and uh, she's just a delight. I had the honor and privilege of introducing her the first time she taught officially at Photoshop World many years ago. Um, she's just a uh, Photoshop whiz. Uh, she's written The Missing Manual on Photoshop, uh, which is enormous. It's so big, in fact, that when she stands on it, she's almost six feet tall. Um, <laughs> which, if you ever saw Lisa in person, would be quite, quite impressive. Um, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's an excellent book, and she's just uh, a wonderful instructor. And now she has a Lightroom uh, ebook as well. Uh, she's taught Lightroom class on Creative Live, and a bunch of other things, and so I'm really, really excited that she was able to join us today. Thanks, Thank you, Lisa. Rob. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, he has a check in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Lisa, what have you got coming up now? What's what's going on for you lately? Well, I am wrapping a new book on iPhoto, a new iPhoto, the missing manual. Woo! Y'all are like, that's consumer stuff. We don't <laughs> care about that. <laughs> so I'm finishing up that book, and that's going to be a, a lot of fun. O'Reilly actually let me add three new chapters using iPhoto on iOS, so that'll be awesome. And other than that, I'm preparing for another class at Creative Live. So March 31st through April the 2nd is going to be a Creative Cloud Essentials class where I'm going to show everybody how to get the most bang out of their Creative Cloud book and show how you can use all those programs together to really ramp up your business. Oh, terrific. So um, I'll, never forget, <laughs> I'll never forget your video for the last Creative Live. Was it the last one? Swimming, swimming in the pool and deep dive. Oh, yeah. It was just great. <laughs> that, was, that was terrific. Thank you. You know, they don't let me do those anymore. <laughs> I think they're scared <laughs> of what they'll open. You know, when they open the file, what they'll find, but they're never really sure. <laughs> I'm a bit feisty. <laughs> oh, that's terrific. That's terrific. Well, we're sure glad you're here with us, Lisa. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And Gerard, what's happening in your world? 
We are uh, waiting for the first day of spring here in New Hampshire, right, Rob? Yeah, we're getting uh, about four inches of snow tonight. Holy That's cow. Perfect, that perfect first day of spring. <laughs> All the trees are blooming over here in Portland. So. Yeah, I got the lovely backdrop of a, of a, of a windowless office. You can see I've got a, uh, you know, where the fires are. Uh, this is, is great. Uh, I was thinking Isaac you were particularly... Who's that picture there? Uh, this is uh, actually Sir Isaac Newton, I believe. It is, all right. Yeah, yeah. We dork out here at Mosaic. We got developers. Yeah. Yep. I think I got, I got, I might, I might be this with you. what you get when you get a whole bunch of software engineers in one room. You get, I've like, got the first know, right 100 of pie behind me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm moving into a new office, so I've got uh, absolutely nothing in my office. At this point. I, I have my my Megadeth signed guitar in the background. <laughs> nice. Okay. And my I, I my Valentino say, Rossi figurine right there. <laughs> I didn't know too much about you, Lisa, but I, I knew I'd like you as soon as I read your website and you were a fan of Andrea Bocelli and Ozzy Osbourne. I was like, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you know, they're not too related, but that's cool. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a perfect combination, isn't it? <laughs> uh, you know, most people say they have eclectic taste in music, but you, you know, seemingly that's that's a good thing. You know, I totally yeah. love it. You know, yeah. but we, we, the the Spotify account at Mosaic uh, alternates between Miles Davis and like Kenny Chesney. It's kind of a bizarre <laughs> mix. Um. <laughs> Oh Lord! So I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm acting as sort of a moderator today, right? So um, we are, we are going to talk about um, a whole bunch of stuff involving Lightroom and Photoshop, um, and I'm super excited to do it because, like Rob, this is something that we hear all the time: is I'd love to use Lightroom, but I just love using Photoshop. I don't want to give up Photoshop, and I'm here to tell you that you do not have to give up Photoshop if you use Lightroom. Um, you can certainly keep using Photoshop, and in fact, in a lot of ways, me using Photoshop. Uh, with Lightroom is makes your life a little bit easier um, than say using Bridge. Um, so I guess we were, one topic we talked about discussing was when do you use Lightroom uh, exclusively and when do you use Photoshop? Uh, at what point do you say I can't take this image any further in Lightroom? I need Photoshop. Rob, well, um, for me, anytime you need to push pixels around, it's time to go to Photoshop. So Lightroom is kind of your starting workflow especially if you're shooting in RAW, and you do all your basics there. But if you need to take advantage of Photoshop's advanced selection tools, layers, if you've got a special action that you run, uh, any of the filters, I mean, there's so many things that Photoshop can do. It's, it's crazy. Um, and in Lightroom, uh, since I started using Lightroom, I certainly my Photoshop use went down a great deal. But uh, we're going to look at a lot of different ways where Lightroom just can't do certain things, and that's where, where Photoshop comes in. And there's no there's no program more tightly integrated with Lightroom than Photoshop. I guess Elements could be come second after that. I mean, that was another question I had, and, and I, I think uh, at least you, you wrote the missing manual on Photoshop Elements. I mean, um, I know that there was a lot of the, the pros will sort of poo-poo Elements, but do you think it is it's still a good value for your for your dollar to try Elements, or is that something that you would recommend for folks who are using Lightroom and might want to add some of this pixel pushing around? Oh, definitely, Gerard. And actually, I wrote Photoshop the missing manual. Another lady wrote the Elements missing manual. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I just I get okay. I get you credit for all missing manuals. Just if it has a green, a green yeah. cover, I thought you wrote it, so my fault. <laughs> That's okay. But no, I love Elements. I teach a lot of classes on Elements, and oftentimes I run into photographers who are just overwhelmed by Photoshop because it was built for sorcerers and wizards and <laughs> all kinds of things like that. And Elements was built for real people. So Elements is so much more user friendly and it's often I think a perfect comparison or a perfect companion program for Lightroom. Yeah, you know what I think in um, <clears throat> prior to the uh, Photoshop uh, the, the Creative Cloud for Photographers deal that's like Nine ninety nine a month, which I think is still going at least till the end of March. They they, they it. keep extending it. Yeah, which is an excellent deal. But prior to that, uh, Elements was a very affordable option for a lot of folks who who couldn't pay for the full version of Photoshop, um, but and maybe didn't need the full version of Photoshop. With that uh, Creative Cloud for Photographers deal, where you get latest version of Lightroom and latest version of Photoshop for essentially ten bucks a month, it's kind of hard to beat that uh, price. And um, but if you're using Elements. Uh, it's still a very powerful tool, um, and and you can certainly do a, very, a great deal of things with it. And it's very similar to Photoshop in many ways. 
when you're using 16-bit files, I mean, I don't want to get too off the rails, but uh, there are certain things that maybe you might run up against. But we're looking at mostly at Photoshop today. Cool. Um, and so uh, we, we sort of put together a quick list of things that you can certainly do in Photoshop, but you are sort of impossible to do in Lightroom, like panoramas, HDR, uh, composites, advanced retouching. Um, and we're going to sort of talk about all of those today, right? Um, yeah. Any other ones that you say, this is what you would need Photoshop for if you're a photographer? Gosh, well, I mean, the thing that... Oh, go yeah, ahead. Go ahead, Lisa. No, please. No, the thing that jumps to mind is is the content aware technology. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, you can remove stuff in Lightroom, but if you want to remove a whole person, forget about it. There's no way you're not going to be able to swap heads or do any of that kind of fun stuff. But because Photoshop has all that amazing content aware technology that we can use with the patch tool, with a spot healing brush, and the healing brush, and the content aware scale and content aware move. So anytime I need to, to move or really eliminate something you know, that's bigger than a blemish, that's when I, I go into Photoshop. Yeah, just to build on that, um, if, if you're using a Wacom tablet, um, Photoshop has the ability to take advantage of the pressure sensitivity when you're doing that kind of retouching. And Lightroom just doesn't have that pressure sensitivity functionality. Uh -huh. It's kind of there a little bit if you like squint and there's a certain thing you do and you turn the thing a certain way. <laughs> Uh, at least that's what I've heard from Wes at Wacom. Uh, it's really hard to see it, but it's not Wacom's fault. Um, so if you're using that excellent tablet, uh, and I do use it, especially for any kind of retouching, uh, go to Photoshop, and you're, you're going to have a much more powerful combination for, for getting that job done. Yeah. And I'm, oh, sorry. I'm probably the, the one here who uses Lightroom too much. Like, uh, I, I use the spot removal brush in a series of little circles in a chain <laughs> to remove a straight line of things rather than go to Photoshop. Because I got in that habit when my computer was too slow and or, or when I didn't have uh, when I didn't have Photoshop when I was starting. And so I, I got in the habit of, of making Lightroom do what I wanted it to. Um, but it's really so much faster and better to, to do it in Photoshop. And you know well, now in Lightroom, Levi, that you don't have to make a series of dots for a line. Who is it? Okay. Yeah, Lightroom <laughs> Five is so liberating that way. Yeah. It's uh, you, you used to in Lightroom Four, but maybe you didn't upgrade yeah. Levi. Or yeah. Something. So even even though the the spot removal tool in Lightroom has been beefed up, it still just can't compare with uh, content aware in in inside of Photoshop. And uh, no way. Especially with yeah, pressure sensitivity. Yeah, the other thing I hear too, Rob, is is people um, who want to uh, say make somebody's arm skinny, skinnier, um, or um, want to do some of the um, the other sort of making somebody look a little bit different. Um, so the wedding photographers that I speak to, they can do almost everything in Lightroom. In fact, they love Lightroom because it speeds up their workflow, as sort of Levi said. But um, when they want to uh, Make make someone look a little bit uh, more beautiful than they already are. Then then usually a trip to Photoshop can help that. Um, Absolutely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So Rob, I know we're going to talk about um, how do we um, how do we actually go from Lightroom to Photoshop. I mean, do I think a common misunderstanding misconception out there is that um, you have to start in Bridge. Um, is and I'm, I'm assuming you're going to show us how to do it, right? <laughs> Let's not say the B word. Yeah. No. Ooh, I know the ugly one. <laughs> Yeah, no, you don't, as a Lightroom user, um, you don't have to use Bridge at all. And while you can, if you know what you're doing, I recommend that you don't use it uh, at all, at, unless you really know what you're doing, only because there's this potential of making problems for yourself if you're not really sure what you're doing. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to show a workflow that starts in Lightroom, goes to Photoshop, comes back to Lightroom, and then it could end there and go to an output state or it could go on to doing some more processing in Lightroom's development module. It could go to from Lightroom to Photoshop, back to Lightroom, and then maybe even at some point down the road you might need to go back to Photoshop again. Um, there's workflows involving raw files that's slightly different than if you had a JPEG, TIFF, or PSD, or even PNG. Uh, so, so yeah, we're going to kind of look at all those different possibilities, but always starting in Lightroom, then going to Photoshop, and then coming back to Lightroom. And, um, what I wanted to start off with is looking at some of the preferences inside of Lightroom that uh, you want to just think about before you start. Um, and then once we get to Photoshop, look at uh, the color settings in there just so sometimes you get there's certain warning dialogues. Photoshop tries to help you, and sometimes it's helpful and sometimes it's annoying. So we can look at how we can 
uh, turn that off or at least set it up so that it makes sense to us. And also, I hacked my Photoshop CC to uh, kind of downgrade my Camera Raw plugin to Camera Raw 8.0. Mm -hmm. uh, often question I've gotten is, is people have a mismatch between Lightroom's version and the Camera Raw plugin. That's happening less now with the Creative Cloud because you're using that. Hopefully you're updating everything at the same time. Uh, but there are people still using Photoshop CS6. And Adobe is still updating Camera Raw for CS6, uh, which is pretty cool. So we're going to look at that. And so some things are going to happen to me that hopefully won't happen to you. But if they do, you'll know what to do. All right. So how about I uh, share my screen so I can show so, you? That. So as, as Rob shares a screen, just one thing I want to mention quickly is that we have two giveaways we're giving today. Um, first of all, we're giving away a free six-month subscription to Mosaic, our professional online backup solution for Lightroom users. Um, we are also giving away a copy of uh, Lisa's ebook uh, as well. Um, so please head on over uh, when you get a moment to mosaicarchive.com slash hangout. Uh, slash hangout, and I believe uh, we will post that in the Q&A section. Um, and you can enter for a chance to win it, and we will award it in real time at the end of the hangout. So sorry about that, Rob. Go ahead. No, that's totally great. Um, so uh, I just have a – so here I am in Lightroom 5, and um, this is Lightroom 5.3, latest version that's out there at the moment. And this is a photo from a Nikon D5300, which is a newish camera. And the uh, support for the Camera Raw format for the D5300 only came about uh, in Lightroom 5.3. So one of the issues when you're going to Camera Raw, when, when you're going to Photoshop, is that when you're starting with a raw photo, so this is a, a, an NEF file, when that uh, is being sent to Photoshop, it's actually being sent through the Camera Raw plugin, kind of through the back door. <laughs> you don't actually see the Camera Raw plugin. Lightroom just sends over that image data and all your Lightroom adjustments over to the Camera Raw plugin. The Camera Raw plugin then renders uh, that photo into Photoshop. So this is why it's important to make sure that your Camera Raw plugin is up to date to the same level that your version of Lightroom is. For one reason is obviously you want to get the latest uh, camera support, but you also want to get the latest lens support for lens corrections. But there's also sometimes obviously bug fixes uh, that get included in there, and sometimes even new features. So there are certain things in Camera 8.0, which I've forced into my Camera CC uh, program, that, um, that aren't in uh, Lightroom 5.3. Or I should say Lightroom 5.3 has some things that Camera 8.0 doesn't have. So hmm. when I send this photo over, uh, Lightroom is going to give me a little bit of warning. And so what I did was I pressed Command or Control E, and that's how you can send it over. You can also go up to the Photo menu, down to Edit In, and there's Edit In Photoshop CC. Now, if you have Photoshop CS6 installed, you'd see that. Whatever your latest, latest and greatest version of Photoshop is going to automatically be your primary external editor. Um, and then you can also add in some additional editors. And then there are some other options down here. But we're just going to look, starting off with this Edit in Photoshop uh, option. And Lightroom is telling me right here that the version of Lightroom may require the Photoshop Camera Raw plugin 8.3 for full compatibility. And it, it's telling you that you might want to update the Camera Raw plugin in the Photoshop help menu. You know, that, that works great if you're using Photoshop CC or Photoshop CS6. But if you're using Photoshop CS4, CS5, you can't, you can't do this. You can't install the latest version of the Camera Raw plugin because Adobe uh, doesn't make it for those versions of Photoshop. It's unusual that it's still updating an old version of Photoshop, CS6, uh, but it is. So if you're using CS6, just keep on hoping that they're going to keep updating it. Um, and so what you want to choose, the safest choice here is, is choose Render Using Lightroom. That means that you're going to get all the benefits of the latest version of Lightroom to render that photo out and send it over to Photoshop. The difference in, the, the, in using Render with Lightroom is that the copy is going to automatically be saved to your hard drive immediately, automatically added to your catalog immediately, and then it's going to show up inside of Photoshop. So does it just take a little bit longer, Rob? Or? It, it might take uh, you know, a little bit, but not, not, not like go get a cup of coffee longer. It just might be, you know, it might seem a little bit longer. But the big difference is 
if you're using the same version of Photoshop uh, of Camera Raw as you are Lightroom, you won't see any dialogue at all with a raw file. It just appears over there. It's going to take a, a little bit, depending on how fast your machine is, to render it. But that photo, once it appears inside of Photoshop, doesn't really exist. It's only kind of saved in some cache file somewhere. It's not until you go inside of Photoshop and go to File, Save, that uh, that photo gets saved to your hard drive and added to your catalog. If I choose Open Anyway right now, because I'm using a, a camera that's not supported by the Camera Raw plugin, Photoshop will open, but no photo will appear. And that's a question I often get, is I got this new camera, I got this message, uh, it works in Lightroom, but no photo appears inside of, cam inside of Photoshop. That's because Camera Raw 8.0 doesn't support my um, D5300. So if I click Open Anyway, it's going to try and send it over. It's going to send it over to Photoshop, but nothing will ever come. I, I'll, oh, just, wow. I'll just be waiting forever. So if I come back to Lightroom and try that again and choose Render Using Lightroom, now Lightroom is preparing the file for editing, so that means it's, it's, it's actually essentially exporting a copy of this, uh, and it's saving it down into my catalog, and now it's, it's trying to send it over to Photoshop. And so now this little message popped up inside of Photoshop, and I kind of set this up to do that as well. So what Photoshop does when you open up a photo that doesn't have the same color space as your working color space, your working RGB color space, it's going to give you a little message and, and make you make a decision, make you make a choice. It's not really, this isn't terrible, it's not bad, it's just maybe annoying. Um, and so what it's showing is the embedded uh, color space for this image trying to open is Pro Photo RGB, but my working RGB space is set to Adobe RGB. And now it's saying, what do you want to do? The safest choice is always to just use the embedded profile instead of your working space. Unless you have some reason to convert to your working space now, because your workload demands it for some re other reason, there's, there's really no, no reason to convert at this stage, and you would kind of lose some of the benefits of working in a 16-bit Pro Photo RGB space right now. That Hopefully, that's the reason why you selected that. So I'm going to choose Use Embedded Profile and click OK. Now the photo is going to open. So let me go back to Lightroom, and if you go to Lightroom Preferences on Mac or Edit Preferences on Windows, and come over to the External Editing tab, right up here in the top, these are your primary external editor settings, and the default is where you choose. Uh, the default is set to be a TIFF file, and so you can choose your file format, your color space, your bit depth, your resolution. Don't really worry about resolution at this point. This is just a metadata tag that gets added into the copy. You can always change it down the road. It doesn't actually, uh, it's not actually going to cause any problems for you. But if you like having a different number start off, then go ahead and change that number. But really don't worry about it at this stage too much. Do you, so do you like to save things as a TIFF, Rob? I do. I, I, the TIFF is the default that Adobe put in. Uh, so that kind of tells you something uh, in terms of what they think is a better choice. Really? Um, yeah. Um, really? Yeah, well, <laughs> oh, Lisa, Lisa contests. <laughs> well, really? You know, if you're if you're an old style Photoshop, you know. Oh, now he's good. calling us old. <laughs> <laughs> I put the word style in there. Um, you're you're kind of you know if you've got like PSD forever tattooed in your lower back, you know, you're probably you know you're a big fan of PSD. I get it. It's you know? right here. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with PSD except. Uh, one of the things I was going to show, if we've got time, is how to do a, a merge to HDR Pro, taking three or more exposures in Lightroom, sending it over to the merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop, saving a 32-bit TIFF file uh, that you can then process inside of Lightroom, just like a regular photo. But Lightroom cannot process a 32-bit PSD file. All right? So... There's one drawback to, to setting this as PSD. So unless you've got a specific reason for using PSD and it works for you, then that's fine. If it's logical and works for you, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with using PSD. Both file formats support layers, support 16-bit, support all the color spaces, do all the things that they need to do. So there's no really wrong answer. Um, I just think TIFF is a little bit more flexible in this uh, in this type of workflow. One other thing I like about a TIFF is that my print labs can handle a TIFF, and so if I'm if I'm in my uh, if if I'm uploading a picture to their Rose system or whatever, 
and I'm I'm in the file uh, in in the folder navigating to to where my file is. Um, I can see a TIFF in there. I can't see a PSD in there. But, yeah, yeah. Well, that, TIFF is just a little, bit, little bit more widely supported than mm -hmm. PSD. But you can always, I mean, if you use PSD on when you export out of Lightroom, you can always change it to TIFF or whatever. So at this stage in your editing workflow, there's no real problem with using PSD except for that 32-bit issue that I talked is it, about. Is it any smaller? I don't think so. I think they're it's pretty... It's bigger. TIFF is bigger? Yep. Bigger. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. Okay. TIFF, TIFF has a few... There's compressed TIFF and there's uncompressed TIFF. Um, when you, if you do use PSD, the other thing you need to do inside of Photoshop is to uh, maximize compatibility so that Lightroom, if Lightroom, Lightroom can only read a certain kind of PSD file. That's with maximize compatibility turned on. Mm -hmm. And that's under preferences, right, Lisa? Is it... I don't know. It comes up every time I hit save if I do it as a PSD. Uh, file handling. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Under preferences, in, inside of Photoshop, preferences, file handling, maximize PSD and PSB file compatibility. You want to set that to always or set it to ask. And if you're using Lightroom, you're going to choose yes. If it's if it's set to never, the file size will be smaller, but Lightroom cannot read a PSD that is not uh, compatible. Will it see it in the catalog? No. See, Lightroom, what happens when, when compatibility is turned on, Photoshop creates a composite layer, and that's what Lightroom sees, and that's what Lightroom works with. Okay, so even if you, don't, even if you have a PSD without, with only one layer, Lightroom still needs that, comp that compatibility option turned on. So if you use PSD, make sure that's set to always or ask, and then choose yes. All right, Lisa. Do you have a do you have a rebuttal on any of that? Stuff? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just you know tips are honking big, so I just roll with PSDs. <laughs> we don't want honking big go. stuff. We don't want honking big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think PSDs are a little bit more efficient for for um, file size on my hard drive. But admittedly, I'm not you know I don't roll with 32 bit images all the time. Yeah, we have one comment from from Jack online here saying it it depends on what he does with it. If he's if he really wants to make a layered file, um, then he'll use PSDs. If he wants a flattened file, he'll use TIFFs. And I think that that gets to somewhat of Rob's point too. Of if you're really looking to use the, the some of the tone curves in Lightroom after you've merged HDR, then maybe TIFF is the way to go, um, as Rob pointed out. Yeah, well, well now, now TIFF will keep your your layers as well. Yeah. Yeah, TIFF supports layers, but some, I know some people who just because they this is how they've always worked. Uh, PSD mean to them means they have a layered file, yeah. and and TIFF for them means it's a flattened finished file. And so if you have a logical scheme that makes sense to you in your workflow, by all means use that. There's I'm not saying there's anything wrong with using PSD. I just want to throw out that caveat around the 32-bit file. But beyond that, there's really no there's no difference in terms of Lightroom. If there's a file size difference, then you know that's certainly another concern, uh, you know, to consider. But um, but otherwise, it's they're functionally in terms of everything else you can do. They're you're going to be able to do the same things. Um, just find figure out which one works best for you. Now, Rob, you're you're talking about raw files now. Um, does this also apply to DNGs? Yes, DNG is by for all intents and purposes a raw file. I know there's lossy DNG and all that, but if you I figure if you're a DNG at this stage, you're looking at a raw file that was converted to DNG either during import or shortly after import. So, yeah, it's a raw file. Cool. And what about JPEGs? Uh, well, if a JPEG, we'll, we'll look at that. So, so here's this raw file that started in Lightroom. Because I chose render with Lightroom, now it's a TIFF file, and Lightroom already saved it as a TIFF file. And um, just to differentiate this from the other one, I'm going to uh, just make a very obvious uh, bit of artwork there. So nice. we'll go back to Lightroom. Um, you, are sick. you are sick of winter, I see. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm so, it out. So Rob, my, you have to tell us what did you do to get back to Lightroom. All right, so all I did was um, inside of, uh, thank you, Levi. So inside of Photoshop, once you get that photo over here, you want to go to File and Save, or you can press Command or Control S, and that just saves whatever work you just, just did. And then I went to File Close or press Command or Control W to close the, close the photo. And, and then, so when you saved it, it automatically brought it back to Lightroom. Well, in this workflow, uh, yes. So because I chose that Render with um, Lightroom option before, Lightroom automatically 
save that uh, photo to my hard drive and edit it to the catalog at that point, then open it in Photoshop. All right. If I um, so here's a photo. Let's see if I've got one. All right. So here's a raw photo from a D600, which I believe was supported prior to Camera Raw 8. All right. So if I choose Command E now, Lightroom is still giving me that warning. I'm going to choose Open anyway, and because no. the D600 is supported, uh, it should open up. All right, so here's that message, and there it is. Right. But now notice, look up here in the um, title bar, it's still showing as an NEF file. All right? This photo has not yet been saved to my hard drive. This copy only exists inside of Photoshop. So if I did some nice Photoshop work on this one, and now I go to File and Save, now this is going to be changed to TIFF. Right now it's a TIFF file. At this point, if I go back over to Lightroom, there's the TIFF file. It got uh, saved to my hard drive and got added to my catalog automatically. I didn't do anything other than go File to Save. It's all I did inside of Photoshop. That's that integration that we have between Photoshop and Lightroom. So now once that's done, yeah, go ahead. When 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 I open a photo into Photoshop from Lightroom, because my ACR and Lightroom are the same version, I don't get that prompt. But what right. I usually get is, do you want to edit a copy with Lightroom uh, changes or edit a copy or edit original? Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. And I think after I'm done with this, if I ever actually finish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I'll, Lisa, I'll let you proceed then. Lisa's yeah. going to show you how to, how to how work happens. with a layered file. Right. right? And, and she's going to, when she does that, she'll encounter that dialogue. So I will not steal her thunder. I'm just going to close this. Yay. And go back to Lightroom. And so... There's that TIFF file, and all I did was save it. So that's the basic workflow, and hopefully when you send your photo to Photoshop, you're going to do something more nuanced than what I did. Um, but that's, I just wanted to show you that workflow back and forth. And while Lisa's doing her bit, I'm going to swap my camera up plug-in back to 8.3 so I don't do get that message any longer, and uh, I'm going to turn things over to Lisa. To answer so, so, so just to recap, before we talked about Lisa, the, the full workflow boiled down is that you press uh, Command E to open it from Lightroom into Photoshop. You press close, and it comes back into Photoshop. Yes. Uh, into Lightroom, sorry. Into yeah. Lightroom, yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. So Command E, or you can right-click and say Edit In, and you can choose Lightroom. Uh, choose Photoshop. Why, why can't I get this right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's one of the you know one of those shortcuts you're going to want to learn because you probably do it yep. quite a bit. But Command or Control E uh, will get you over there. Or just remember go to that photo menu, edit in. There you go. E for edit. I, I have to I have to say when I tell people that and they they ha don't know that that exists, it usually like their mind blows. Like yeah. they're like, oh my god, I can just press one button and it opens up in Photoshop. Like that is so awesome. So I think we're saying it very quickly here, but like usually for a lot of people, like that's like, boom, yeah. bam. Nice. All right, Lisa, why don't you show us some layered photos? Thank layered. you. Thank you, Gerard. I would love to. Mm -hmm. So I need to come over here and share my screen with you guys. Yeah, remember, choose, choose your desktop. Choose my desktop, and I'll make sure no dirty pictures are hanging around for anybody to see. <laughs> it's up your tattoo, Lisa. It's up your... <laughs> I, I love PSD tattoos. <laughs> All right, are we seeing my screen now? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Excellent. Okay. So one of the things that I love to use Photoshop and Lightroom together, it's like, you know, you wouldn't go to a plastic surgeon for like if you had a cold. So I like to think of Photoshop and Lightroom as their specialist. So I like to do all of my color correction and anything like that in Lightroom. And then when I need to, send it over to Photoshop. Because color correcting in Photoshop is way more difficult than it is in Lightroom. So I get to have fun in both programs because I'm using them to their superpowers or their special abilities. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I love to do is to create collages. So this is a collage I did. My, my husband and I go to Hawaii a couple times a year. I know. Go ahead and hate me. It's fine. <laughs> But I do a ton of shooting for all my books and magazine columns, and this is a couple that I shoot every year. The names are Marv and Shirley. They are 95 years old. I hope wow. I look that good when I'm 95. <laughs> so as you mentioned earlier, Gerard, yeah. <laughs> um, Lightroom can't do compositing. 
So what we're going to do here, let me go back to grid view, is I'm going to take the two original shots, so I'm going to click to activate one shot, and then I'm going to command or control click to activate another shot. And while Rob shows you how to open a, a single image in Photoshop, I'm going to show you how to open two images in a single Photoshop document, and the two images will land on their own separate layers so that we can do the composite. So to do that, unfortunately you can't use a keyboard shortcut command or control E like Rob did, but you have to a control or right click on one of the photos that you've selected, and you're going to trot down here to the edit in menu, and then you're going to cruise over to the contextual menu, and you'll find at the bottom there's an option to open as layers in Photoshop. So we're going to go ahead and click that. Now it's going to take a second for Photoshop to uh, come into play here. So right now Lightroom is sending those two images over into Photoshop and you'll begin to see this happen in two separate documents. But then Photoshop is going to go ahead and copy and paste those items into a single document so that we can build our, our little oh so romantic composite here. And one thing while this thing is, is building itself out that I want to mention is that it's often easy when you send something over to Photoshop to hang out there a really long time. You don't want to quit Lightroom until you save that file. Right. Because if you if you quit Lightroom, if you just space out and you forget that you know you had done this, Lightroom will never know about the PSD. So it can't go back if Lightroom is not open. So just remember that you did it and don't quit Lightroom. <laughs> <laughs> now we can, we can synchronize the folder and get it back in pretty quick, but it's so much easier if you just keep it open. Right, right. There's a little bit of punishment involved. <laughs> so here we are in Photoshop, and I'm just going to do a super quick little collage. I'm going to go ahead and grab my uh, elliptical marquee tool, draw a nice soft oval on top of Marvin Shirley, and then we're going to add a layer mask by clicking the circle within a square icon at the bottom of the layers panel, and then we're going to feather the mask after we created it, um, non-destructively by the way, by double-clicking the mask itself and using the masks panel that appears and using the feather slider. So that way if the client or you changes their mind about, ooh, I like it feathered or it's too much or what, whatever, then you can pop it open and quickly adjust the feather amount. So here's our cute little collage. So now I'm going to choose File Save As because I'm pretty persnickety about my file names. And as long as I don't move the location of the file, I can still change its name. So we'll call this one Marv Shirley version 1. Go ahead and click Save. And now when we come back over to Lightroom, we'll see that we have that file there as well. And then we're going to experiment with opening this layered file back up in a couple of different ways to, to show you what happens with that. So now we can come back over to Lightroom. And here's our collage that we just made from Photoshop. So now let's say we need to open that layered file again. So if I simply press Command E or Control E on the PC like Rob did, then I get this little dialog box that Levi you were talking about earlier that asks us exactly how we want to open this file. If you want to open the, the layered file, you've got two options. Edit Original, which is what I usually use, or if you want to experiment with a different version of this PSD that you just created, you can choose edit a copy. So let's choose edit original and we'll click edit and Photoshop immediately pops back open our file and you can see that our layers are all intact. So we'll close that, go back to Lightroom, press command E again and choose edit a copy and let's see what happens with that. Once we click edit, you're going to see Lightroom make a copy of the file. See that happened right here? So now I've got two of those PSDs, and then Photoshop is going to open that copy. So that would be good if you wanted to experiment with, say, oh, a different feather amount or a different treatment on this particular composite that you're creating. So we can close that, go back to Lightroom, and I'll just go ahead and delete that copy. Now let's say that we wanted to tweak this collage in Lightroom's develop module. Well, we can certainly do that. We can tap D to enter the develop module. And just as an aside, I love rolling in solo mode. Don't you guys love solo mode oh, with yeah. the panels the here? Mode. Yeah. So it rocks my world. It does rock your world, doesn't I it? I just call it like calling it rolling in solo mode. Like, <laughs> it like sounds like like it's like a you know like another song. Like Yeah. <laughs> So what we're talking about here is normally when you're in uh, any of Lightroom's panels like this, you open one and you 
got to open another, and all the daggum things stay open, and it's just madness. So what you can do is you can make them pop open and close themselves automatically by option or alt clicking one of the tabs. And when you do, the triangle next to it turns into a bunch of little dots. So that means as I click another tab or panel, the previous one closes itself automatically, and I really love that. I really, really love that. And just as an aside, to that aside, if you want another panel open, let's say I want black and white open and I also want split toning open, all you have to do is shift click that second panel and then you've got both of them open and that's super sweet right there. I only didn't know that. That's oh, awesome. Oh yeah, baby. It's a good one. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so let's say for this image that we want to make it a uh, black and white and maybe we want to add a little bit of a a split tone here using our split tone panel. We'll go somewhere in the in the browns for a vintage Hawaii look. And now when we come back uh, over here to grid view, now let's pop that open in Photoshop. If we want those Lightroom adjustments that we just made, the black and white and the sepia, if we want to see those back in Photoshop, we are forced into choosing edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. But look what happens. Photoshop is going to open up a flattened file. So that's the caveat between you know going from Lightroom to Photoshop and then back to Lightroom and continuing to edit a layered file in Lightroom. If you want those that second round of edits, if you will, to show it back in Photoshop, you've got no choice but to open it up as a flattened file, and that's a bit of a drag. So in my workflow, I tend to not re-edit my Photoshop. When, I, when I've gone from Lightroom to Photoshop and there and back again, I, I typically don't go back into the develop module. Well, so, so Lisa, Lisa do, you, do you do a lot of uh, color correcting and other things in Lightroom first? Uh, before yeah. you start there? Yeah. Definitely. Okay. And then you'll still get that open with Lightroom adjustments um, to start, right? Right. Okay. Now, Lisa, it seems like sometimes, and help, help me work out what actually happens here. I think, I think if I've been working in Photoshop and I, I hit save, but I don't close the image in Photoshop, and then I go to Lightroom and say I apply a vignette, and then if I go back to Photoshop and do something else to the image, I think it updates to Photoshop with my vignette still on it, or to Lightroom with the vignette still. Is that right? Do you know what I'm saying? You know, I haven't tried that way, but I'd have to test it to see. Yeah. It's probably if not you, a good idea to try. Well, no, if you, if you um, like at least as an example, her layered file, if she took that layered file into the develop module and did whatever she wanted to do with it, and then she went, oh, wait, I, there's something I wanted to do. I wanted to turn on a layer, turn off a layer, or do something and then chose Edit Original and opened the layered version back up into Photoshop, as soon as she saved that again, you would get back in Lightroom the updated PSD file with whatever change she made with the Lightroom adjustments laid, laid back on top of that because Lightroom is just doing that on the fly. It's not, it's not actually applying the changes to the pixels. So once that PSD file gets up. Now, there is a little bit of a lag sometimes in Lightroom for it to update uh, to refresh whatever change you made, but if you switch, like, if you go, like, from the develop module to the library module, zoom in one-to-one, -one, that's going to force it to render a new preview, and you'll see that. But So that is possible. It's not a typical workflow, but it's, it's, it's doable. Right, right. Well, and so another way that I, I sometimes do it, too, Lisa, is if I, if I want to edit the original again, I might... Uh, make a virtual copy in Lightroom, and mm. then I can just take my settings and repaste them onto the new file. That's right. Again, that would work. Backwards <laughs> as well. <laughs> the, the big, you know, the big question I always get, and I think you know, Lisa just demonstrated, is if you need to open the layered version, choose Edit Original, or if you want to make an experimental copy, choose Edit a Copy. Right, okay. If you Just Good. remember that. If you want layered version, go Edit Original. Yeah. If you don't need the layered version, if you, a flattened version is okay, then choose edit a copy. It's not going to flatten your original. That's what people always think. Lightroom just flattened my original. It didn't flatten your original. It made a copy that was flattened. Your original layered file is still there. So, sorry, Lisa. Excellent. Right. Oh, no, no apologies. <laughs> should, should we talk about opening images as smart objects now, Rob? Um, yeah, I think that sounds great, but before we do that, let me just give one more plug for uh, joining our contest so you guys can get some, some cool prizes. If you just go to mosaicarchive.com slash hangout, 
um, you can be entered in to win. It just will take a second. Um, so you do have to go over there. This is um, only for people who are joining to hang out live. So for people who are watching this later on, you, you, you cannot join. But you'll get either an awesome ebook from Lisa, or, or you can get a six-month free subscription to the Mosaic uh, online backup program for professional and serious prof photographers. So, say, um, I think can you say a little bit about what Mosaic is? You don't, I don't think you did. Right. I don't think I did. No, I didn't get it. So the, the, the 20 second version of what Mosaic does is we, we are um, a Lightroom solution for photographers and we have two aspects. You can, uh, everything you do in Lightroom can show up on a mobile device. So you can see all your Lightroom photos, your folders, collections, and you can even uh, edit the metadata, uh, including stars and flags, on a mobile device and it'll go right back into Lightroom. Um, the other cool thing you can do with um, Mosaic is back up all your originals. Um, you can do that selectively. So you can say, I only want to back up my two star photos or my flagged photos, and we will automatically back those up for you. So um, uh, you can also get a free version of the Mosaic apps so just head over to the App Store, search for Mosaic uh, Lightroom, Mosaic Archive, and you will find us there. So thanks, Rob. Does, does Mosaic work with PSD files? Not, not sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anything you can put into Lightroom, PNGs, uh, whatever, TIFFs. Uh, you know, I know you love TIFFs. Lisa loves PNGs. <laughs> PSD. So. Yes, we'll back those up. Even video files. So there you go. There you go. That's right. terrific. And then also, if if you're enjoying learning about how to use Photoshop and Lightroom here, you will surely enjoy coming to Photoshop World, where you can learn everything there is to know about Photoshop, not only for photographers but also for design as well as illustration and animation. It's incredible. Uh, what are your favorite classes coming up, Rob? Um, I'm always I always get assigned to the Lightroom track, so I'll be in there. And there's uh, actually some new Lightroom classes. I think Jeremy Coward is teaching a Lightroom class, and Zach Various is teaching a Lightroom class. Uh, I'm looking forward to. Um, there's there's always neat stuff if you can get to go uh, on the pre-conference day, uh, which is the day before the official Photoshop World starts. Dave Black I think is doing a really cool light painting class somewhere out. Yeah, in the I, I went to that one, and that was pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, Dave Black, uh, one of my favorite photographers, but he's just a really just stellar human being, just a wonderful person to spend some time with. So uh, if you ever had a chance to do that, I'll be there. Levi will be there. I'll I'm be really, there. I'm really sad. Um, you are going, Gerard? No, no, Levi's going. Oh, Levi's going. Yeah, I'm, I'm sad Lisa's not there this time. I really hope she'll be back very soon because uh, she was always one of my, my high points of, of getting to see her and her husband, Jay, just wonderful people. Um, but well, and we've got a special code here. Yeah, Although I, I, think, it, I threw it in my lower effect? third here, uh, underneath my name there. Now, did it there. did it expire on Monday, or is it still? No, I think I think uh, our code still is good for fifty dollars off. But I think okay. what expired on Monday was the early bird. <coughs> right. Deal. So, but the that code was the is double, there. So this is still a good code. It's April eighth through eleventh in Atlanta, Georgia. And if you haven't been to Atlanta, it is my favorite place to walk around and photograph. There is. So much to do there. It's yeah. going to be a great place. Yeah, so. and come come say hi to us. Uh, we'll be we'll be around probably in Lightroom track. <laughs> yeah, we'll hope to see you there. All right, Lisa, back to you with Smart Objects. Smart Objects. Thank you, Levi. Let me share my screen again. So another way that you can pop from Lightroom to Photoshop <clears throat> is to open your image as a smart object. And there's several different reasons you would want to do that. First of all, when you do that. Lightroom sends the actual raw file over to Photoshop, so you have a lot more flexibility, you know, instead of a pixel-based file. So that's awesome. But I want to show you a thing that not a whole lot of people know about called snapshots. So let us say, for example, that we have this lovely picture of Waianani here in Hawaii, and we know that we've got a persnickety art director or client or what have you that is always changing their mind. So we can just tell right from the get-go that they're probably going to want a black and white of this photo, but they're not going to know that. So how can we prepare several versions in Lightroom that we can access over in Photoshop? Well, using smart objects is a way that you can do that with a feature called snapshots. So let's come over here to the develop module, and let's go ahead and make Wainani a black and white by just clicking B&W in Lightroom's panel there. And now let's also turn her into a sepia by using the split toning panel. I'm going to option or alt click the hue slider in the shadows to get a nice kind of aged brown look going on, vintage Hawaii there. And then release the modifier key and drag my saturation slider up until I'm happy. So let's call that good. Now let's pop over here on the left 
left-hand side of our screen, and what I want to do is use Lightroom's Snapshots panel. Well, y'all remember from a moment ago that I'm in solo mode, by, and I did that by option-clicking or alt-clicking any of the panel names, and I know I'm in solo mode because the triangles have little dots inside of them, and when you're in solo mode, you can only have one panel open at a time unless you shift-click the second panel. So with my history panel open and my snapshots panel open, I can save different versions of this image in Lightroom that I can access in Photoshop. So I'll just go ahead and click the plus sign and Lightroom asks me what I want to name this one and we'll just call it sepia. And now I'll use my history panel to go back to the black and white version. Now I'll press the plus sign again under snapshots and we'll call this one BMW. And now let's go back even further to the full color version of this file in our history panel and we'll click the plus sign again on snapshots and we'll call this one cleverly full color. Now when we pop over to Photoshop, so I'm going to go back to the grid view because I need to control or right click the image that I want to open and we're going to come down here to the edit in menu and we're going to choose open as smart object in Photoshop. So smart objects in Photoshop is basically just Photoshop putting a protective wrapper around the image that you're sending over so that really anything you do to the image in Photoshop happens to the wrapper itself and not the file inside of it. It's great for experimenting with photo size and a layout if you don't know what size you're going to need it to be in the end because every time you resize pixels it kind of makes them a little bit mushy. So here we are in Photoshop and we know we're dealing with a smart object because it has that special little little tag. Oops. There we go. You can see it on the bottom right of the layer thumbnail, that special little badge. So the super cool thing is that if you double click this smart object, since we sent it to Photoshop from Lightroom as a smart object, Lightroom knows it's a raw file. So if you double click it, it automatically opens camera raw. Well, if we come over here to the snapshots panel, looky there, there's our black and white, there's our for color, and there's our sepia. So snapshots are way cool to create several different versions in Lightroom that you can access in Photoshop uh, very easily and quickly. Oh, wow. Very cool. Yeah. That's cool, yeah, isn't it? I didn't know that, yeah, I didn't know that <laughs> snapshots carried over that way. Cool. That is really sweet. Yeah. It's good for experimentation. Right. Very, very cool. I think um, uh, just before we, we, we get to Levi, I was going to show us some panoramas. Uh, a couple of uh, answering a couple questions in the in the Q and A, uh, Annette, thank you. Um, I'm glad you won the contest last time or a couple times ago, and that you've used our product. So thank you very much for the kind words, uh, Matt. You cannot edit uh, raw files in the Mosaic app. Um, sorry, uh, we just don't have the power. We don't have the power to do that yet. Um, <laughs> we'd love to work on it uh, in the future. So. Um, I think that that's all. I think as Steve has been, uh, Steve works for us here at Mosaic. He's been posting that link. So if people are looking for that link, that is on the Q&A on the session. But again, it's mosaicarchive.com slash hangout to enter the contest. So uh, check it out. Uh, if you need a link, you can click on it from the Q&A. So um, Levi, you have a tip on how to do panoramas. I think we're running close to time. So let's, right. uh, we can well, move quickly we'll here. Quick. Um, um, and I ought to switch our screens here too. I am going to... You're in a camping chair. I'm in a camping chair. <laughs> I am, I'm moving into a new office today. <laughs> and and it's, a, it's in a great outdoors, apparently? Or? It's the only thing in the room. <laughs> and my wife had the car, so this was the only thing I could walk over to the office with. <laughs> so I am in a camping chair. <laughs> That's awesome. Does yeah. anybody else think that Levi looks a little bit like Benedict Cumberbatch? <laughs> He does. Oh, yeah, totally. Doesn't he? Yeah. And I get a really droll look on my face. And... <laughs> <laughs> You're making me blush here. Let's see. Screen share. <laughs> so what I'd like to show you is how to use uh, Lightroom to manage uh, panoramas. And I'm going to do it a little bit differently. So I photographed this is... This is Delicate Arch, right? Isn't that the one? In southern Utah. And my panorama yeah, is, is a grid. Yet, oh, you can't see my screen yet. We just see your delicate face. <laughs> Got a... that, that hat does look like you're camping, though, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing. You got, you got like, the, you know, the fleece jacket on. Mm -hmm. Let's try this again. 
Get a little star <laughs> going. That's right. We're roasting marshmallows over here. Okay, now here we are. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes? Okay. See, we see an infinite screen. There we go. Infinite screen. Catching up. Um, so this is Delicate Arch in southern Utah. And what I wanted to do was make a grid panorama. And so this is what I photographed. I did a row of three by three. So it's nine images in a, in a, in a grid this way instead of just horizontally. And I think that's a lot of fun because this allows me to, if you look closely at each image, um, I, I'm using a 105 millimeter lens at f2.8, and that makes the background out of focus, which you can't do with a wide-angle lens shooting a wide panorama. Um, and so by, by zooming in this way and doing a, using a long lens to photograph a, a large object, it allows me to do this thing. So all you have to do, and, and it's the same process whether we're doing uh, just, just a row of panoramic images or a grid like this. You just select all of your pictures, and I just clicked on one of them and then shift-clicked to the end to select them all. And then you want to right-click, and you have to right-click down on the thumbnails. I think you guys already said that uh, when you select multiple images. And then choose Edit In, and all the way at the bottom, we've got panor Merge to Panorama in Photoshop. Now, we could do the same thing if we were working on an HDR series here, too. And just click here, and that'll, that'll take you to the uh, HDR dialog in Photoshop. But we're going to Merge to Panorama, and it's going to come up and ask me if if we want to use what what method we want to use to interpret the panorama. I don't know about you guys, but I always just choose automatic. Does anybody do anything differently? Nope. I've tried some of the other ones, and automatic always just works the best. Um, and it's going to come up and ask us that sometime. It's going to take a while, because I already opened this to show you what it does. Um, Oh, here it goes. So this is the photo merge dialog, and it says, um, what, what do you want to do? And just choose auto. It works great. You might want to choose the vignette removal. That usually works really well. Blend images together is already uh, selected. And then just hit OK. I'm gonna, we're going to pretend I hit OK, but I'm hitting cancel. Because I already hit OK and brought this picture up. And so what we see is that it's taken each, um, each of the images and blended it together using layer masks and given us the entire panorama. And I think that is so cool. Nice. Is there anything else to say about that? Ooh. So then you just hit you just hit command S to save or or file uh, file command S file save to, to get back there. And um, and then it brings you right back to Lightroom just like we've been doing all along and you end up with your your big color image. Oh, so the other thing though, it's so powerful to do a panorama in Lightroom this way because in the uh, develop module before we go to Photoshop, we can do adjustments and, and make tonal adjustments and color adjustments and then just select all the images again and go to the one that you, you did the adjustments on first and then choose the synchronize button and then select the options that you adjusted and then you hit synchronize and they all get the same adjustments applied. So the color and tone are all exactly the same in each of those. And that is so nice, I think. So that's Panorama in Photoshop. I think the only thing I left to do, Levi, would be to put that as your backdrop to your office. And so right. that way you look like you're sitting in a camping chair with <laughs> that behind you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That arches. Cool. That would be just. That would be so cool. Uh, um, cool. Well, I think we're, we're that for next about time. out of time. So, uh, yeah, do that ne for the next hangout. That's what we want. You just paint your office with uh with that. Um, I think we're about out of time. So, um, I think what we're gonna do is actually just announce the contest winner. So, Steve, if you could, uh, if you're listening there, could you pick a contest winner for us? Drum roll, please. <laughs> Yeah, a, come on. There should, there should be a drum roll sound effect. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Is, is there one in the effects panel? <laughs> Let me see if I can go there and we can see. And who, while we're uh, while won. we're looking for that, we want to just remind you one more time that Photoshop World is your gateway to mastering these tools that that uh, help us produce great images. And so we'll hope you join us at Photoshop World. And it's a lot of fun. April. It's really it is just fun. Yeah. It is. I can vouch for that.
Yeah, there's yeah. great activities all the time. There's terrific people. Yeah. And uh, use, our, use our code, save 50 bucks. The code is PSWFOCUS414. Thank you. Save you 50 bucks. That's and then right, out, to, uh, right out of this... Right after this hangout, get out your iPhone, your iPad, go to the App Store and look up Mosaic and download it to your uh, to your device, and then you'll have all your photos in your pocket, and you can show off your portfolio to, you, to anybody whenever you'd like. That's and, right. Uh, yeah. I'd, if if you see me at Photoshop World, come up and show me some pictures. I want to see what you're doing, and uh, get inspired by looking at everybody else's work right there on your app. And it's so great to be, um, you know, I've got I've got all the albums on my on my iPad that I've put in there. But they're not adequate. I want to go to the collection where I'm actively working in Lightroom, and I've got my collection set up with with my latest best works. And those don't always make it to my iPad, but using Mosaic, they always make it to my iPad, and so I can go right to it and and show you my. I just heard the coolest story, story today, which just made me so happy, it made like my heart bleed. Uh, it was awesome uh, that a woman w- had mo- the Mosaic app on her, and she ended up. Uh, she was at a concert, and she's a concert photographer, and she had never done it professionally. And when she brought out her portfolio, uh, she got a professional gig. Her first professional gig ever was because she had her portfolio in her pocket, um, and it was because of Mosaic, which was so cool. So we we have two winners. Uh, we have Rob Palumbo. Congratulations, you have won the free six-month subscription. And David, me. what's that? I thought it was me. You said Rob. I was like, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, you have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And uh, D- David Moore. Uh, David Moore, congratulations, you have won Lisa's book. So um, we are very happy for you both. So um, we will be in touch with you on how to, re- uh, how to claim your prizes. So um, with that, I uh, just well, want to Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was going to say th- thanks, Gerard. And... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Where do we find you? Uh, you can find me at, at Mosaic Archive uh, on Twitter. Uh, I am uh, usually the one that is doing all the tweets from there. Uh, plus Gerard Murphy 3 on uh, Google. Uh, and Mosaic is also on Google Plus as well. Thanks. And Lisa, where can we find your books and find your next teaching and find out when you're going to be in Hawaii so we can come join you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking, Levi. You can go to photolisa.com. That's L-E-S-A. So photolisa.com. And on Twitter, I'm at photolisa, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, come hang out with me March 31st through April the 2nd on Creative Live. We're going to have a blast. And Gerard, maybe uh, you and I can hook up and I can show off Mosaic during that class. Wouldn't that be I'd cool? love to. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Yeah. And i, I got to say, Lisa, I spent a few hours on your site the other night. Um, Devouring all your your free videos on there for tips on on uh, Photoshop and things, and I, I used them yesterday, so I really appreciate you sharing those with us on there. Ooh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> she's got a lot of stuff. There's a lot of she's got a lot of free stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, incredible. I do. Yeah. <laughs> and the most important thing that's going on with me is that next month. My husband and I are going to the Hollywood Bowl to see Black Sabbath. I nice. can't wait. Nice. <laughs> that was my Christmas present. No, is, is Andrea Bocelli opening, or is that the, no, your, that'd be pretty your, cool, your dream though. show? <laughs> yeah, I figure we'll go to Italy to see him in 2015. There you go. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's exciting. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and you'll let us know so we can we can retweet and share your Creative Live class coming up soon too. Yeah, definitely. And thank you guys for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Absolutely. And Rob, where can we find you before we track you down at Photoshop World? <clears throat> uh, uh, Lightrumors.com is my blog that sadly needs to be updated more often. Um, blogging at PhotoFocus, I need to get on that. Boy, it's always so hard for me to keep up with the blocking side of things. Um, I've got, if you go to my site, Lightroom, Lightrumors.com, I do have a Lightroom class that starts up the first Friday of every month. And it's kind of a soup to nuts Lightroom class over at um, the Perfect Picture School of Photography, ppsop.com. And uh, we have a lot of fun. And I give everyone in my class a copy of my Lightroom book. So get that. Excellent. Thanks, Rob. Yep. And I'm Levi Sim. You can find me at levisim.com or on PhotoFocus or on Twitter at PhotoLevi. And uh, I'm on Facebook. And help me join back up with Google Plus if you would. And we'll see you guys soon on PhotoFocus and at Photoshop World. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank Thank you, you. Rob. We'll see you guys. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. See you next month. Hey, what? Next month?